Hey everybody, all right, Dr. Amy here, and I am, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission this week, and you're gonna be seeing a bunch of different lives from me, and we're gonna be debunking myths, going through some of the biggest myths, the things that are so irritating to me that I see happening in our profession, and that are really, are stories that so many chiropractors and so many of you, and even me, myself, I have had, I've bought into these myths and these stories, but in the past as well, um, about working with kids, with neurodevelopmental disorders, families with behavioral learning and socialization challenges. And tonight, right now, we're gonna talk about the whole thing that I hear. I hear it is one of the biggest things I hear coming from the word, the mouths of chiropractors and why it's hard or what their, their um, resistance is or what their insecurity is or the reason that they don't feel like they're, they want to work with more people with neurodevelopmental disorders, even though they think that, and they know that we can help them, they're nervous to. Or they think like, oh, I don't know if I have it in me to do it. And this is that it's hard to work with the parents. The parents are a pain in the butt. The parents are difficult to work with of these kids with behavioral learning and socialization challenges. I want, it, Dr. Amy, I want to work with this population. I know we can help. I want to get out of just the pain, chasing pain and symptoms. I want to lead with the brain, but man, is it hard to work with parents. And this goes for not just NDDs, but for working with kids and having a pediatric practice in general. And so we're going to talk about that. The first thing is one, you're not committed to learning. Um, about the neurology and decision-making psychology of the parent. Maybe you have all the clinical goods and know-how and are committed to having the right exams and having the right procedures and having the right adjustments and honing your skills. But if you cannot create a safe place and create communication that works for the neurology of a parent living in chronic stress, it's not going to matter because it's the parents that you need to communicate to. It's the parents that need to feel safe and heard and that you're different. And it's the parents that are making the decision to initially start care, to stay on care, to follow your recommendations and to trust you as their most trusted advisor. And one of the biggest things is we don't recognize how to just understand how to communicate, how to sell to, how to teach and educate and connect with a parent who's living in chronic stress. One of those things is understanding that they are living likely, doesn't matter their intellectual capacity, how educated they are, how smart they are, they're living in decision fatigue. These families have had to make a lot of decisions for a long time, likely, by the time they get to you. So they have to make decisions on how to allocate their resources. They have to make decisions on, do I get a diagnosis? Do I not get a diagnosis? They have to make decisions on, do I do a dietary change? Do I listen to this provider or that one? Everybody's saying something different. What, do I, what about school? This teacher says one thing and this one says another. How do I discipline my child? How do I connect with my child? Does my child have a future or are they destined for a broken life of disconnection? They are living there. Like I said, it has nothing to do with education or intellectual capacity. It has everything to do with what chronic stress and massive amounts of demand for decisions and big decisions, um, what that does to them over time. So by the time they get to you and you are setting, so many of us are setting up like, I wanna have tons of options. I wanna have like, do you wanna come three times a week or do you wanna come two times a week? Do you wanna come you know, Mondays or do you wanna come Tuesdays or do you wanna, I work here for you and thinking because of our big hearts that that is helping. So often that, let me give you five options for financial plans. Let me have you pay every time and make an appointment every time because you're going to feel better about that parent because you're in control, except for that's creating a ton of little decisions all the time, more demand. We need to be simple. We need to communicate directly and clearly and create very few decisions to be made, right? If it's, and we've talked about this before, in a financial plan, maybe two options, maybe three, but not more. You can always expand, but you start 
simple and you start by creating fewer demands on the parent. Next thing is really this concept of, well, I need to, I need to give this long-term goal because I know this is going to be a long-term care plan and it takes time to see the changes and we're not just treating symptoms of hyperactivity or dyslexia. And that's true. However, and you need to communicate that. However, you have to understand that a brain in stress needs to also have something short term to grasp onto because seeing the future, visualizing future is something that's a little too abstract for a brain in chronic stress. And so we need to give very specific wins and short term goals. Hey, um, I want Johnny to, we are here, we want him to have a better time in school, making friends, socializing, and getting to um, grade level and reading. Of course we want that. Of course we aren't treating that. We're looking at improving underlying function, improve functional, we're, make changes in the, in the way that he's using his brain and, and, move, and move through this functional brain-based assessment, change the tools that he's using, improve his ability to engage and learn in his community. But here's the thing, mom, the first win that we're gonna celebrate is when he's able to have a bowel movement every day. Based on his history, based on his exam findings, this is going to be a win that we are going to celebrate. So I'm giving them a short term, a long term, pulling it into short term, giving them something specific to visualize and saying, we're going to celebrate this. So that is not saying we're treating symptoms. It's not just saying we're in this for the long term. It's doing both of those things, but it's also giving them, we're going to celebrate when we see changes on this heart rate variability or this pupillary response, or when I see Johnny lay, can lay on the table and get adjusted, or when I see that Johnny can come in the office and not have to go through his peg routine in order to get into the adjusting room to get adjusted. Mom, we're gonna celebrate when that happens, even though there will still be other challenges going on. And so mom knows, great, that's what I'm looking for. We're gonna celebrate that milestone together. That is a stop along the way, and that's a window into a changing brain. If we understand parent, the parent neurology, what they're, what they're coming to the table with, what stress and high demand lives have done to, to them, to their learning, to their retention of information, to their reactivity and responsiveness, um, it allows us to create a safer, better, and more effective environment to communicate to sell to, which is important because we want to be able to sell our concept, what we believe that can, and we know can help their children um, in our office and with our clinical tools. When we can understand what they need, we can do those things better and we can have better results for their children, for, their, for them, for their family. It's not just that parents are a pain. It's not just that these parents are so hard to work with, which is what I hear over and over and over. It's that we aren't necessarily taking into consideration their lives, their stress, what it's done to their brain, their learning, and their um, ability to engage and, and make decisions. So we need to change our procedures and our communication um, first by understanding how to communicate with the parents. So try some of those things that I said. There's a whole list of other ones. If you want more, let me know. There's a whole list of other ones. And this week, we're gonna be going through a ton of other myths or challenges or obstacles or stories that people are telling themselves that we are hearing, that I am hearing in this profession. Things like, how, do we, how are we actually hurting kids by giving them primitive reflex integration exercises? How are we sometimes creating more of a problem with our adjustments? Um, how do we, you know, adjust challenging kids? Listen, you want this stuff, you want more of this, or do you have a challenge that you're like, hey, this is a big obstacle for me? Let me know. We'll see if we can talk about it and or bring some other experts in that might be able to help you see how to find this solution to help these families in your practice. This is what we're doing this week. We are debunking these myths that are out there that are holding so many of you back from working with so many of these kids that need you and talk about having an abundant practice right now. If you can, if you can help these families and be a source of information and hope for these families who are challenged with behavioral learning, socialization, and chronic stress response, 
you're helping a lot of people and you're creating a lot of abundance in a lot of different ways. And that's what I'm here for. So let me know what your thoughts are. Have you all, have any of you had that thought um, that you didn't want to work with this population or you did a little bit and it was kind of hard because of the parents? Please. We've all been there. It's something that's really common. I hear it all the time. Um, let's hear about it. Don't be shy. All right. Be well. Do good work. Remember, these kids are not broken. These families are not broken. And they need hope. They need information. And we need to empower them with that. And that's what we're here to do.